Doctor, I need to borrow some equipment. Is that so? Whatever for? I'm conducting a series of zombie takeouts. And welcome to Zombie Takeout, the B Movie and Cult Movie Show. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, it is our last episode of the year, so of course we have to do our best and worst lists. Only doing five this year because it was kind of short. Uh, we had, yeah. a, a, you know, we hiatus for nearly half the year. Um, and I'll start off um, with, of course, worst lists. Um, number five, student bodies. The first half was really good, but that second half was a slog, especially having to watch it twice. And you know, that's my number five as well. Um, it, it wouldn't have made a worst of list in a normal year, but because the the herd is so thin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of on the, on the edge. Um, these yeah. next two on a, on any other year probably would have, wouldn't have made my list. Um, number four, Heat Seeker. It was just kind of there. Yeah. Uh, at number three, well, what's your four? Might as well... <laughs> you know what? Heat Seeker is my number four as well. Because oh, wow. it's, it's the same thing. Because it's just, yeah, I remember just being, wow, that really underwhelmed. Well, they didn't I... have a fucking ring to the box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing that stands out. Like, what What were they doing? I think I know where we're going to disagree. Because, um, anyway, we'll see. Um, I, that yeah. one might be the same. Number three, uh, 2019, after the fall of New York. Also, just kind of there, but slightly worse. Uh, that that I have that even worse. <laughs> okay, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is the 2002 version of Rollerball. Okay. I have that even and worse. It, because that just pissed me off. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it was still, like, it was still put together. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it, yeah, it really sucked. <laughs> My number two is the 2002 version of Rollerball. Yeah, and that's where I put after 2019 uh, after the fall. <laughs> so we're really, we really almost have the same worst yeah, of list. I think we're going to disagree on this one. Um, because All my right. number one worst of the year, of course, is the only movie I have ever tapped out on, Lobster. Oh, yeah, that's somewhere in the middle for me. <laughs> I figured. Um. Ballistic, of course. Okay. <laughs> and e- this was like such an easy list for you to put together. I mean, with the exception mm. of like which of those other three were, you know, in there. But yeah, mm. Ballistic X versus Sever. Yeah. Uh, just should not have been made. <laughs> I, I kind of have fun with that one. I've seen it a few times. It's not particularly interesting, but it's 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 amusing. All right. uh, but all, although historically speaking. It it's nowhere even near the bottom, you know, oh, ten no, no. of what we've done. We really had a very light year. Yeah, yeah. Considering we had nothing for me at least, nothing go below a brain. Yeah, it, it was a really good year because I, for me at least, because I I'm all five, fives on my best list. I did not oh, even really? have to go down to a to a four and a half. Um, and I'll just kick that off, starting with at number five this week's movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Really enjoyed oh, well, it. Yeah. I, um, I miss Climation. Oh. It was Twisted Rankin and Bass. Uh, more on that in a little bit. What's your five? Uh, I went with El Mariachi. Okay. I have that slightly yeah. higher. I mean, which one was... It was a tough call between mm-hmm. that and Bandersnatch, honestly. I mean... The, the the two were yeah. really solid movies that I'd watch again in a yeah. heartbeat. Nightmare honestly. edged Vander Snatch out of my top five. Um, at number four, I have El Mariachi. This is a shocker. Nine number four is Mandy. Interesting, huh? I have that <laughs> one higher. Um, again, um, nine number three is Mandy. Uh, I, I mean, it's an incredible movie there, but. There are some kind of weird things. It's one of those things like mm. Beyond the Black Rainbow where you're like, is this something I'm actually enjoying? I mean, it's a great movie, uh-huh. but am I actually enjoying watching this? I am still scarred by Beyond the Black Rainbow, and it's been like <laughs> six or seven years. Um, so, you know, Mandy, I wouldn't mind watching again. 
Um, I'm never yeah. watching Beyond the Black Rainbow again. What's your number three? Mine's speaking Mandy. of in, speaking of enjoyment, uh, number three, one of the most enjoyable movies of all time, Twisted Pair. Okay, I had a feeling Breen was going to make your list. He didn't make mine. <laughs> of course. Uh, my number two, Phantom of the Paradise. Loved it so much, I bought it midway through watching it. Uh, my number two, and this could be my highest ranked anime of all time here, uh-huh. Howl's Moving Castle. I was hoping that would make your top list, your best list. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we actually have very similar lists again, because my number one is, of course, Howl's Moving Castle. And my number one is Blade Runner. I was not at all surprised by that. <laughs> all right, so and how on... weird! In, you know, going to the uh, Bradbury Building yeah, yeah. in Los Angeles, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like five months later. Yeah. All right. So on to this week's movie, which, as I said, was from 1993, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it does. It's been like two weeks <laughs> off. Yes, that does bring us Uh-oh. to the impromptu pause summary. Sponsored by Deadly Nightshade, with a ghost- ghostly skull in every jar. Poison your neck soup with it. We are uh, we're limping across the yeah. finish line. <laughs> Pretty <here>. much. <laughs> Which actually is what more my sponsor is about more than anything else. The second <laughs> half of the year has been rough on both of us. Brought to you by bourbon. <laughs> uh, nothing helps you get through... That Tim Burton movie. Actually, I could say enhance enhances Tim Burton it. movie. I don't think you needed help getting Better. through it, but I can definitely see how it would enhance it. <laughs> Vermin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have the um, uh, it's very, very complicated political system. We have um, a town of Halloween that has a, a mayor, but it also has a king. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, I guess he took his political structures from George Lucas with, you know, the princess and the senator and the elected queen and all that other stuff. But um, you have a king and a a mayor. Uh, It's the town of Halloween. And, of course, their main duty is to, of course, celebrate Halloween. Uh, Then you learn that it is one uh, town of many others, each one supporting its own holiday. And each uh, one has a door to it with a tree, you know, that's a tree with the drawing that represents that holiday. Yes. I have to wonder what the Arbor Day Town tree looks like. A tree tree. Yeah. Well, then it, it's the same thing as a Christmas one where there's a Christmas tree, tree on the, on the tree. tree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would like to have seen an Arbor Day tree too, though. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Um, but the thing is, uh, Jack, the Pumpkin King of the Halloween town, is uh is suffering from burnout and i guess i mean i kind of was starting to identify closely to him i was like you and me both buddy where's that bourbon no um actually i started out with i started out with the low you know like just like a hard cola thing from spreckler but Mm. i figured go easy to, to start with um he wants to um he wants to do something different for a change there has to be more in life than this right and um he decides to go with the biggest holiday of all, Christmas. And why not? Go big or go home. He, mm. He's just enamored by it. He kind of stumbles upon it accidentally, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. in, in the forest with the tree, he just happens to go down that one. And uh, he decides he's going to um, take over for Santa Claus and run the holiday. And, um, mm. well... Yeah, he the the plot gets very complicated, you know, with the uh, the kidnapping and mm-hmm. the making of toys, and um, they kind of give the message of stay in your lane, <laughs> do, know what yeah. you got to do and do it best, um, or at least if you're going to do something different, think about what your impact is <laughs> on others. Don't so they, kidnap an icon, an, you know, an iconic character. And just think you're going to step right into the role with minimal yeah. training. Mm-hmm. That, and that is important things. Uh, it, it does take hard work to do what he does. Mm. So, of course, they kidnap him and um, they go about uh, the, the holiday festivities. Only, of course, 
it is all fucked up. Um, their, you know, their aesthetic is just too different for Christmas and doesn't really fit into it. And um, they start uh, shooting at them. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that Christmas Town has a military? Well, it wasn't Christmas Town. He went out into the world. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Delivering presents and um, mm-hmm. breaking into people's houses yeah. and leaving fucking terrifying shit. <laughs> so um, naturally, they started shooting at him. And um, I guess we could say hilarity ensues here. It's Rankin and Bass on a bad acid trip. And it, the, actually, the Nightmare Before Christmas, Before Christmas started off as a poem written by Burton in '82 when he was working at an, as an animator at Disney. No so, kidding. Yeah, and I'm glad they included the poem in the beginning, at least some of it. I, uh, I don't know if that was the whole thing. Um, it does start off with a nice poem, um, and this is basically a Danny Elfman musical. Right. And <laughs> admittedly, Elfman's movie music has gotten a bit overplayed in, in subsequent years. But, but I yeah. love Blingo. I love Elfman's whole style. So I was really happy with an Elfman musical. And uh, I mean, well, I mean, as happy as one can be with the musical. <laughs> Just kind yeah, of what's yeah. working against this, in my opinion. That was kind of one of my potential sponsors was, um, you know, it's musicals. They don't always have to suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantom of the Paradise, I think, was a oh, solid yeah. musical. This one, mm, <laughs> it's a musical. <laughs> And the lighting and animation are perfect. Supri- and the animation is surprisingly fluid since it is actual claymation. It's not CG. It is none of it CG? Nope. I mean, it's not a mixture of the two? Full on um, stop motion. Because, I mean, there's some stuff in here that, I, the beginning, the stuff with the trees in the beginning was just amazing to look at. Like on, mm-hmm. I, I, and they didn't design it for an HD television. They probably no. didn't design it for HD 93. at all. Right. So, w- I mean, was this remastered that we? That's entirely we saw? possible. Because I mean, it just looked amazing. It looked new, mm-hmm. which was just kind of shocking. I was watching it on Disney Plus, and they've been they have kind of tweaked things for their service. So you know, in my case, it might have been you know upgraded a bit. Um, I rented it through Amazon myself, hmm. so hmm. and I mean, it was yeah, it was just beautiful. Look at, I mean, you know, normally I'm watching these movies on a computer at, or a laptop or something, but yeah, hmm. this one I actually watched I... on my TV, and it was just hmm. like, wow, I picked a good one. <laughs> just quickly going back to the trees that lead to the different holiday towns, I have to wonder which Thanksgiving is celebrated in Thanksgiving Town. Ah, maybe they do double duty. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. Since it is kind of the same thing, really. Mm. And I, I really like Jack trying to understand Christmas scientifically. Because he, <laughs> he kind of stumbles his way into Christmas Town and sees all of this, you know, these, this celebration that he never knew. Which kind of, you know, cured his, his um, ennui. It really is ennui. Um and and he brings some of it back, and he borrows some equipment from the mad scientist to try to understand it. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what his experiments really would mean. I don't. That's <laughs> why I kind of really kick out of it because he he smash accidentally smashes a cranberry with a magnifying glass. <laughs> this is uh, the first time I've ever seen this movie sober. Same here. Really. Um, and, and I mean, I think there's a lot that I've missed mm-hmm. <laughs> passed out for but uh even seeing it i it wasn't even buzzed by this point uh-huh. uh since i started with the movie rather uh-huh. than pre-gaming uh-huh. uh i could, couldn't really make out what his experiments were <laughs> well i think it was just random science stuff on thanksgiving or, or, or on christmas paraphernalia like as if you could understand a holiday scientifically yeah and, um, another thing I loved was in, in the midst of all of this, Sally, the, uh, well, how would you describe Sally? She's uh, the Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frank- oh yeah, Bride of Frankenstein, of course. Thank you. Oh, um, there's no she, Frankenstein. All of her limbs are kind of loosely sewed on. Yeah. And she jumps out the, of this tower to escape the, the mad scientist who's trying to, you know, hold her captive because he sees her as his daughter. Her Her leg and arm come off in the fall and she just sews them back on. Oh, he saw her as his daughter. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a daughter thing. 
Okay. Because, um, yeah, I... Hmm. That was kind of no. that was kind of father. I mean, I mean, that was still kind of creepy, but not, not, not that bad. Um, I mean, I'm not the most woke guy in the world, but fuck, man, that that was kind of really bothered me. <laughs> but the, the way she was just kind of casually sewing her arm and leg back on after she fell killed me. I think that's when I really fell for the movie. That and the song about kidnapping Santa, as they called him, Santa Claus. Yeah. He hires gotta... the boogeyman's kids, Jack does, to kidnap Santa Claus, and they sing a song about kidnapping him. I mean, there's uh, there. Burton has a certain aesthetic, of you know, fifties, sixties kind of aesthetic that mm-hmm. he he goes back to a lot, like yeah. Mars Attacks, right, a- and the first Batman. Yeah, like there, there's a lot of stuff in this that you see. Uh, like, like remember the floats in the Joker's parade? Right. You see a lot of those floats here, and, mm-hmm. and the snake was kind of a Beetlejuice thing too. Uh-huh. He does borrow a lot of things. I would say borrow, reuse a lot of things. Yeah, um, but it, but it fits where where oh, he's yeah. using it here definitely. Probably more so than where it was used originally. To tell you the truth, Batman. <laughs> but there are just so many things, that, and I think it's partially it's because I've avoided Tim Burton for many years. I got kind of oversaturated, like most of us. And this was kind of my reintroduction to him. And also because I went into it kind of expecting a bit of a kid's movie. I think he lost me with Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Probably the same. I think if you, had, if you put a finger on it where yeah. it was like, where did he go wrong? Yeah, Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Um, and even that, I mean, that I despise Planet, his Planet of the Apes. But even then... Even when I was liking him, I, I still just got a little tired of his whole thing. Um, but well, because it is very repetitive. Yeah, yeah. It is very. This, this might as well have been Edward Scissorhands, you know, as the Pumpkin King, you yeah. know. <laughs> but this, you know, was my reintroduction to him after many years, and going into it expecting something much more kid friendly, I was just amazed by how dark it got. You know, this kid singing this song about kidnapping and torturing santa claus yeah that's what he does <laughs> or this really just creepy version of jingle bells that the band was playing right like making it kind of a funeral march mm-hmm. or the scientist coming up with this new his new creature who has a profile that's just like the scientist he opens his head and splits his brain with the creature <laughs> Well, so we could have a, a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. It was just, I, I was just wonderfully shocked by it all. <laughs> also, Jack rising out of the coffin as Santa, Nosferatu style. Yeah. Loved that little nod. Um, oh, by the way, this was not directed by Burton. No. It was produced by Burton, uh, I think mostly written by Burton, but directed by Henry Salak. Is it just that he more, had more experience with the animation? Yeah, I think so. Um, and he did done other, some other kind of family friendly holiday stuff, so it kind of fit it better. Also, Skellington was played by two performers. Uh, Elfman, of course, sat, did the singing, and Chris Sarandon did the speaking. Now I'm trying to remember what else Chris Sarandon has done. Uh, Princess Bride. Oh, okay. King. He was the king. Um, I think it was the king, or he was in there. Um, one of the oh, two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh... He was no. He wasn't the king. He was the one that that um, always faced off against his father. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he, they were matched because um, Sarandon's speaking voice matches Elfman's singing voice, and it really was seamless. You didn't notice it was two different voices. No. Now there is something in the movie that I should have seen coming a mile away, but I didn't because I was just kind of into the movie. Um, Jack has this ghost dog named Zero. Yeah. And you, I noticed early on that Zero's nose glows. <laughs> I did not see it coming that he would turn out to be Jack's Rudolph. Yeah. <laughs> um, also really like Sally's song. Really nice melody. Um, the one she sings after Jack leaves. Because she tries to get him to not do it. She's the voice of Raven in the movie. Right. She's Cassandra that yeah. can see into the future. Mm-hmm. Knows what's going to happen. But everybody ignores her. 
Sing Sing's is a really nice song afterward. And then this is in the trailer. I've seen this before, but it still got me in the movie. He sneaks into this house, leaves some presents. Kid catches him, thinks he's Santa Claus. Gives the pre- kid a present, you know, slips out the chimney. Kid's parents show up, you know, behind him. Oh, would he leave you? Kid reaches in the box, pulls out a severed head. <laughs> Seen it before, but it still got me. So there's a lot that, I mean, the the skeleton reindeers, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That the mad scientists have first created. A lot of a lot of holiday mashup. Of course. There are all sorts of references to Christmas, of course, because it's the nightmare before Christmas. Yeah. I just really love the combination of Burton and Burton and Elfman in this case. It's they've you know, they've worked together a ton before, of course, and ton since. But I think they, they really play to each other's strengths in this one. Because Elfman, even back with Boingo, has always been sinister. Well, yeah. There's always a darkness to his music. And it just plays so perfectly with this movie. I also really like Jack's song after he was, speaking of Elfman, uh, after he was shot out of the sky and finally realizes his mistake. (laughs) Now, another um, moment that uh, I found kind of uncomfortable in this. Okay. Or problematic or just whatever. Hmm. And that would be Boogie. (laughs) Well, okay. Um, played by a black performer. Um, yeah, I didn't think about it at the time. Boogeyman is just an old expression. Right. And he's kind think... of this classic bluesy kind of voice. Yeah. I think it's when he brings the dice out that I'm like, ooh, that's, um, mm, yeah, that's okay. a reference. Um, mm. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think yeah. That. That's actually when I broke out the burp. <laughs> 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 it's actually pretty close to the end. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A couple of notes left. Um, huh, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really connect a lot of that. Um, speaking of Boogie, though, I did like the fight between him and Jack. Oh yeah, the set was was really amazing. He's fighting in Boogie's lair, and the set dressing was really great. And I, and just the snowing in Halloween Town was just this really nice twisted kind of cliche to put a, a capper on the movie. You knew it was going to happen, but it was just kind of that perfect ending. Yeah. Uh, one of the parts that I think we missed that I liked about it was the mayor, of course. Mm. Um, the mayor, being the politician, has a face that he has, you know, he talks out when he's happy <laughs> yeah. and, and putting on a great air. But when he gets angry or nervous, there's a second face on the other side that spins around. I, I mean, that that's one of the parts I remembered from when I watched this originally or mm. when I, I think I watched it a few times originally, but I don't remember the second song all that much. <laughs> I think I passed out one uh. time by the second song. On two sequels and remakes? On the sequels and remakes. In 2001, Disney began to consider producing a sing- uh, sequel, but rather than using stop motion, Disney wanted to use computer animation. Yeah. So this was all stop would. motion. Um, yeah. In 2001, of course, they wanted to go CJ. Uh, Burton convinced Disney to drop the idea, saying, quote, I was always very protective of Nightmare, um, not to do sequels or, or things of that kind. Burton ex- he explained, uh, continue, he continued, you know, Jack visits Thanksgiving World or other kinds of things just because I felt the movie had a purity to it. And the people that like it because it's a mass market kind of thing, it was important to me to keep that purity of it. Uh, he he kind of talked in circles there, but basically he wanted to keep it as a one and done. Yeah, to keep it, you know, to, to keep and from painting it. There's nothing and... wrong with that, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, sometimes, I mean, of course you can put anything on Broadway, and I'm mm-hmm. kind of surprised this hasn't made it there yeah, yet. Yeah. Um, uh, if you did a sequel, maybe somebody taking over the Halloween Town. Uh, how now? Now, now? Uh, the 2004 video game, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge did serve as a kind of sequel to the film, with the Capcom crew of developers uh, going after Burton for, for advice and having a collabor- and having the collaboration uh, with the film's art director as well. Um, in 2009, Selleck said he would do a film sequel if he and Burton could create a good story for it. And then in February of this year, it was reported that a new Nightmare Before Christmas film was in the works 
with Disney considering either a stop-motion sequel or a live-action remake. Oh, God. I, I, I don't, don't know. see how a live-action remake could work. I mean, at that point, you might as well just do a Broadway staging of it yeah, instead yeah. of a live... A- a- they're just trying to redo the whole catalog. Mm. Yeah, no, I, mean, the, I mean, I don't know how they, I mean, not more like I was going to say, I don't know how they convinced Burton, but I think money is the obvious answer. Um, yeah. A stop, a stop motion sequel. I could, I'd be interested in. I'm morbidly curious about a live action remake. If they go that way. No, you know, these live action Disney movies now just feel like, I mean, they are just a shameless cash grab. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are really just, you know, yeah. cre- you know, color by numbers, you know, movies. And it's not playing to their strengths. You know, I- I've so signed up for Disney Plus when it was available because of Star Wars and Marvel yeah. and yada yada. Um, but I've been wanting to, and I- I've started to kind of get into some of the Disney stuff, some of the their better known stuff. Their strength has always been animation. Yeah. Say what you will about their storylines. Nobody does animation better than Disney. I mean, I'm sure they're making a ton of money with these live action movies mm-hmm. because they're hardly putting any money into them. Yeah. yeah. And and it's like you said, cash grab. It's, it's like all of those animation live action movies like Garfield and all of that shit. Yeah. That, that got made. It's, it's the same sort of thing. And it's, 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 it's not what they do best. No. They need to stick to animation because I've seen, I finally saw Frozen. Fucking loved it. Um, oh, yeah. Big Hero 6 was really good. Um, animation is what they do best. So, yeah, they need to stick with that. I'm, I hope it, if they do it, that it's, it's stop motion. On to Brains? On to Brains. Like I said, it, it made my top five of the year. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going five. Uh, you know, I enjoyed parts of it. Parts of it, eh, not so much. Mm-hmm. But uh, it looks beautiful. I'm giving it a three. All right, good. I don't have to put it on the rock list then. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be up early tomorrow. Um, all right, so what have we learned? Uh, yeah, bourbon, man. <laughs> awesome. And I learned that I miss claymation. You know, I grew up on that stuff in the 70s and early 80s, and it's been a long time, and it was nice to see it again. We need to review the California Raisins movie then, don't we? God. <laughs> it kind of fits us, I think. Anyway, uh, that's it for The Nightmare Before Christmas and for 2019. Until next year, when we'll be starting the year off with Harold and Maude. Absolute to classic. Don Pardo, you know, if there long is a next time. <laughs> you know, long overdue for us. Um, until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you there are. There you are.